Greetings, friends. It's Friday, my day off. Yay! And it's going to be a beautiful day. I think I just might have to get out on my motorcycle today. I don't know. I hope I, I'm able to do that. Uh, it is the 25th of September, and I'm going to read the epilogue to this beautiful book, Walking a Literary Labyrinth, that we have been reading for the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to begin today with the first verses of the Gospel of John, and a gospel that the verses that you probably probably know well. Verses one through five. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not extinguish the light. Give beauty back an apologia. This is her epilogue. I walk down to the beach this early October afternoon to see if the tide is right for a swim. Two swans, accustomed to being fed there, come waddling toward me on their splayed feet. I hold out my hands to show them I have no food. They stop, fold their legs beneath themselves, and tuck their orange beaks under their wings, perfectly symmetrical. On the weather-worn raft, beached by the outgoing tide, too low for swimming, a cormorant holds its gray-black serrated wings stretched out full span, unmoving against the blue sky. I lie down, a piece of driftwood under my head, and feel the warmth of the sand through my jeans and shirt. Out of the breeze, the sun is hot. What am I doing? Nothing. Enjoying the sun, gazing at the white swans, the black cormorant, the tranquil bay, the wide sky. In the beginning was the word. All things came into being through the word. The swans, the cormorant, the bay, the sky, creatures all, including me, gazing, savoring, praising, if only implicitly. I think about reading and writing, the human words that strive to mirror all of creation, making us see what is there to be seen, and in Hopkins' phrase, giving beauty back to the creator. What have I been doing in the thousands of hours that I've spent reading but that? Giving beauty back. A terrible beauty sometimes. Not all sweetness and light, but beautiful because true. Full of grace and truth. Like the word, these human words too have been grace for me. And like the word, they have brought me into being, making me who I am in countless ways. And what am I doing now? Writing? How can I justify spending all this time putting words on paper? Shouldn't I be working in a soup kitchen, dealing somehow directly with the poor, the homeless, the sick, the uneducated, the imprisoned, the issues of justice and peace? These questions haunt me. I suspect that some of my sisters working hard on the front lines as they are, have the same questions in regard to me. In my perplexity, I give myself various answers. I appeal to the doctrine of the church as the mystical body of Christ. They, all involved in these good works, are doing them on my behalf, and I am doing my work on theirs. God arranged the members in the body each one of them as God chose. As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, 
nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you, as we find in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 20 and following. I imagine that contemplative nuns and monks might have the same questions that I do about the worth of their lives. It takes a lot of faith in a pragmatic culture like ours, and in the face of the world's ills, to do nothing but pray. It takes faith to believe in the power of the written word for good. It takes hope to hold all that a work well made is its own excuse for being. All the while hoping, too, that those who have so much less than I find moments in which they know that life is more than mere survival. Moments in which they find beauty and give beauty back to the Creator in praise and thanksgiving. In the end, it comes down to the swans, their beaks tucked beneath their wings, the cormorant, motionless, its wings outstretched, who knows why? You do what you were made to do. Some of us were made to read and write. Thanks be to God. I agree. A lot of my life has been made around reading and writing and preaching and speaking and teaching and all those things that go with it. I too must say along with her, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for all the ways that you call us together as your body to do the work that the hand may do, which may be different from what the foot does, which may be different from the, what the eye and the ear do. We are grateful for all the gifts you give us, for all the need for those gifts, that we may be able to find ways to use them, that you help us to see and guide us to use. We pray, God, that today we will have, with openness and willingness and honesty, an ability to open our hearts to you and to be guided by you every step of this day. We pray, too, for all those who are asking for you to be with them where they are, in hospital rooms, in nursing home rooms, in school rooms, on school buses, walking the sidewalk, going to the store, all places that we pray you will keep us safe. We pray for the rhetoric that is being tossed to and fro in this neurotic culture that we are finding ourselves. We pray that we will take a higher road, your road, gracious God, your road of love and grace in the midst of turmoil. We pray too today that we will remember how to go lie on the beach in the sand in our t-shirt and jeans and feel the warmth and hear the waves and see the birds fly and wonder about their wingspan and why. We pray before it turns cold that we will take in these beautiful sights that we have right in our backyard that we will not forget that you are also in the details of this creation. A little green bug, a gray um, heron that may have wingspan that looks like a pterodactyl, and the honk of the geese, in the beauty of the flowers blooming, and the changing colors of the leaves. We pray, gracious God, that we will pay attention to some of those details and be fully in the present moment with you. Not worrying about the future, not lamenting the past, but being here. Because you will get us through each moment if we are truly here with you. We know that Jesus taught us how to do that, how to do that with courage and love, and we pray that we will be guided by his presence. We pray it in the name 
in his name and we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Enjoy this day. It might be one of the warmest that we have for a while. I hope you'll go out and soak up some of the sun.